Are you curious about aftermarket warranties on vehicles you can get from dealerships? Well, we got a situation here. Dealerships sold a warranty. And this is kind of like what happened. All right, the transmission blew up. So like, good, she had she bought the extra warranty. That's awesome. But just, I'll, I'll explain it at the end. Here's the, here's the situation. Date is June 16th, 2024. Approximately a week or so of driving spots on the ground of fluid. I already have one drip on my floor. You can see right here the cover for the transmission. Right here, your peak hole is gone. It's not there. You can clearly see transmission fluid dripping out there. Not a huge leak, but it, a leak has coated the cross member right here looks like excessive rtv everywhere this trance has been put together it looks like they sat it down on the pan that is shop grease and oil right there that's how the transmission was probably just sitting in the shop but looking around everything looks really nice besides the excessive rtv everything looks clean and that peak hole being that rubber plate, I believe it is, sits right in there, just like those two rubber spots. We definitely have a trans fluid leak. So it must be coming from the torque converter seal inside there. I'm sure it was new, unless somebody uh, messed something up installing the torque converter lining stuff up definitely a leak there i see new hardware on the exhaust that's really nice of them um i do see what appears to be a leak coming from that seal there for the cv axle this is a two-piecer the inner one i'm going to the passenger side possible leak there let's check out the other side it looks a little bit moist as well. That could have been some pre-lube or something. Not sure. It does look like we got a little runnage off of that. See these drips coming down? So this aftermarket trans is shifting better than she said it's ever shifted. But perhaps some cheap seals or incorrectly installed seals. I would say the shop service was good the customer service the communication time frame not too bad just we got some trans leaks so let's put her down and check out our trans fluid level a leak like this probably won't shut you down or anything it'll just continue to be a slow leak it could get worse and then be a bigger slowly a bigger and bigger leak this started a week after she noticed a drop on the cement where she usually parks. And uh, so I got it up in the air for her. 2014 Dodge Caravan. These transmissions are notoriously good. Not like on the journeys and stuff. The, the uh, Grand Caravans, they got a good transmission with that 3.6. You won't see very many fail. This one, when I went to do the trans service at 100,000 miles, Half the bolts were loose. One of them was backed out this far. There was a lot of RTV. We opened up the pan. There was metal chunks in there. Not really clutch materials. Fluid was clean. But there was a few metal aluminum chunks in there. I was like, yeah, maybe it was some casting shavings. Maybe it's never been done. Uh, maybe the last person screwed up. Who knows? Transmission goes out at about, you know, 122,000 miles. Extended warranty. Covers it. $250 deductible. They took it to the place and uh they got the transmission put in for the 250. about a week later she notices drops on the concrete so now it's time to check that out real quick way to check if your trans fluid is about where it should be on these dodge caravans pull your engine dipstick out and we're gonna want to be a little bit above the safe for the engine that happens to be where it should be as far as inches up the stick because this is a dealer use only transmission the fill is down there you see the hole right there yep 
Yep, there it is. That's where we're gonna put our dipstick, boys. Remember to always use a clean dipstick when you're uh, going down dark holes. We're gonna gently slide her in, making sure we don't miss the hole. We're gonna put the stick in until we feel it bottom out right there. It's bottomed out. Now, as we pull the stick up, we're gonna go ahead and grab it. We don't want it to drip down the stick or anything. And we are a little below the safe. Let me look. Oh yeah, we're almost right on the minimum of the safe. Can't pick it up on the camera. But I can see in real life, that's where it is. And with a completely hot transmission. So you just went for a long drive. Your transmission, the fluid has shifted through all the gears. Transmission's hot, engine's hot. In park, still running. You put the dipstick in. It should be a little above that safe fill line. That means she's lost maybe a quart, maybe in a week and a half of driving or so i i don't know the exact date on top of my head so this is going to be a uh ship back to the dealership situation who just performed the job and uh, i'm kind of suspecting these this is not a reman rebuilt or oem transmission what the warranty company paid for was an aftermarket transmission and if she wanted to upgrade to something better like a rebuilt or a, or one straight from chrysler it would be, uh, they would cover up to that price, then she would have to fork out money for the rest. I think it came to about $1,700 if she wanted to go with the uh, the Chrysler transmission. I would recommend a rebuild. I like rebuilds, like uh, they've been on the road for 10 years. Hey, we figured out this is weak, this is weak, this is weak. Those parts have been uh, upgraded. So uh, a good transmission rebuilder will always go with the better parts and your transmission will be better than if it came straight from Dodge Chrysler. That's just my two cents. I would say she should probably contact them before 30 days is up at least for the job and say, hey, I have a transmission leak. It's not a fast leak, it's not a slow leak. Uh, it's probably coming from that converter seal right up in there, they go together. And uh, yeah, it's probably probably leaking right there just real slowly defective seal cheap seal uh installed incorrectly seal maybe somebody was in a rush maybe it's got a little warp to it but yeah this is going to have to come back down and that seal is going to have to be replaced unfortunately the transmission itself looks beautiful nice and shiny i was half expecting the leak to be from these line seals i have had to replace couple of them before right there and there there they got a fill uh, fitting with a o-ring in the middle and I have had to replace those also where the metal connects to the rubber they like to leak there once they get higher in mileage these ones look really clean I was kind of hoping it was just one of them for her it's a quick job I mean of course the seal for the transmission should be covered by warranty but you know you don't want to go a week, two weeks without a vehicle while they get you back in for uh, warranty work. And here's our seal that would be leaking right here. It, the torque converter, the shaft, rides around that seal. So, I mean, even for Timken, which is supposed to be a great brand, it's $2.86 plus shipping from Rock Auto. So, pretty cheap seal. Maybe it was deformed somehow defective who knows but yep just a three dollar seal can make you drop your transmission again all right i didn't want to go from memory i wanted to actually like look it up and i was a little bit off but here's the specs at 200 degrees your uh, transmission's hot operating temperature you should be at between 40 and 55 millimeters up whatever stick you use you don't have to use the engine dipstick you can use a any dipstick as long as it measures that far and it can go down in the hope just got this sick altitude craft uh bolt measurer gauge thingamajigger look at that you can uh thread it into the holes you can thread nuts on 
pretty sick. But you got your centimeters and inches on this side. And of course, one, one centimeter is 10 millimeters. So our mark should be right there at the four to the 55, the middle of the safe on this particular engine. They also use these, what are these, 62T transmissions with the uh, 3.8 liter. Really good transmissions. So even though your engine dipstick will be different because it's attached to a 3.8, it's still always going to be 40 to 55 millimeters up your stick. You can make a little notch. You can put a little permanent marker on there just to make sure. So we were still inside the safe range at about 48 millimeters. So we got had eight millimeters left to spare. Judging from the leak, I would say it's only leaking when the car is really running, not when it's sitting. So we got a slow leak on our hand right now. May get worse in the future. Seeing how we are at 48 millimeters, we're right in the middle of our range. We can top it off with a little like a quarter quart, half quart, because we know we're leaking until we can get the vehicle back over for more warranty work to the other place. But yeah, this is a... A slick little thing I just got right here. Okay, I'm going to go hang this on my wall right now. So the update. They had to do their own inspection, even though they got sent a video. And then, yes, they said all three external seals are leaking on the aftermarket trans. So when you buy that warranty, the, aftermar the warranty company gets to decide what they're going to do. They had an aftermarket transmission for this, not a rebuilt, not a remand, not a, an OEM. And they said, that's the price they're going to cover. I think that's a little messed up because you bought the warranty and you should be entitled to the original equipment parts. And so if she wanted the Chrysler transmission, it was going to cost... They would cover up to their price for the aftermarket transmission. She would have to fork out an additional $1,700 to get the original equipment put in. That is a little sketchy to me. I think if you purchase a warranty, you need to read everything and really know what you're getting into, what, what aftermarket warranty you're getting, what dealership warranty you're getting, because I feel like she's entitled to the original transmission that was in the van when she bought it anyways these aftermarket transmissions said shifting great shifting great but after two three two and a half weeks of driving she, it doesn't shift the same as when she the first week it's it, it she just tells tell a little different i put it in reverse and it kind of gave me a little lag and uh, i didn't much care for that um i don't know if the dealership put all that rtv on or if the transmission just came that way but as you can see the a good brand seal is only three dollars so th what what kind of seals are they putting in that all three of them are failing who's installing them maybe it wasn't the seals fault so what are they getting those seals for 50 cents so they could have paid for it's crazy it's crazy they could have paid for the three dollar seals and if it's an aftermarket company they're probably buying in bulk getting a discount maybe they're paying a dollar fifty for a Timken seal, maybe a dollar, maybe two dollars, and this is going to cost that warranty company because they're cheaping out on those seals, getting the aftermarket transmissions. Um, just a couple dollar seal is costing them the labor because the dealership gets paid again. I mean, it's warranty work, but they get paid again to remove the transmission. Now, this is what they're going to do. The warranty company, the paper pushers who don't actually work on cars, they said we're going to send you a new transmission. And you're going to install that, and we're going to pay you for the, for the work again at the dealership. Um, no faults on the dealership end of things. I'm assuming cheap seals. So nothing they did wrong. But the warranty company, they're, they're giving you a cheaper transmission, obviously, because the seals aren't even holding up. Three for three. You know, o for three, really. O for three. And they're putting these cheap seals in. Now they're paying the dealership transmission labor again because they didn't want to spend the extra four, five, six dollars on better seals. Unless somebody who is putting the aftermarket transmissions together messed up three seals in a row. I mean, I assume you're, you're doing seals all day long, so you should be good at it. So I don't think that's the key. I, I don't know what happened. I don't know. But all I can say is it's ridiculous. The 
dealership can bring the transmission down, they have to anyways, to change the torque converter seal. Why don't they just throw in the $3 seals, put it back in, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, it's done in a day. Instead, she's gonna have to wait a week and a half for the warranty company to ship out another aftermarket transmission and then wait another day or two at the dealership for them to do the work. Instead of them getting her in right away, changing the three seals, putting it back up. And then the warranty company is paying for shipping. They gotta ship the transmission, get the old, well, new old transmission shipped back to them, then have their own guys inspect it, change the seals, ship it back out to the next customer who buys that transmission. So whoever's doing the paperwork uh, is really costing the company, that the warranty company, more money. And you know, the more money that company loses, the the higher they got to push up their warranty premiums because you know they're they're not in the business to break even or anything so it's a lose 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 situation for everybody she's got to wait again the dealership only gets paid warranty time they got to do the work again i'm sure they got other stuff to do it looks like they're a pretty busy place and the the warranty company loses this way as well so whoever's doing the phone calls and paperwork at that warranty company phew, and I hope this video was helpful for anybody who's thinking about buying one of those warranties, the extended warranties, like your dealership when you buy a new vehicle, like yeah, it's covered for 100,000 miles. She bought the extended warranty, so it's covered up to 144,000 miles for all drivetrain. Like obviously brakes, tires, uh, spark plugs, uh, pulleys, they're not covered by the drivetrain warranty, but she actually got the good warranty. So like uh, hub assemblies are covered, Anything drive line, drive train, you know, uh, transmission, engine, stuff like that. A lot of stuff is covered. Not everything. You know, basic maintenance isn't. So know what you're getting into. Know what you're buying. And I mean, that's how it works. They, the aftermarket company says, we'll pay up to this amount. This is the part we are willing to pay for or provide. And if you want quality parts, you've got to pay extra money on top of your deductible, whatever you set it at, zero, 250, 500, 1,000, whatever your deductible is, the higher the deductible, the less your monthly payments. I think she pays an extra 25 to $40 a month on her car payment for this. And uh, so you're paying that every month. You gotta pay a deductible and then they only pay for the cheapest possible part. So I hope this information is helpful for people thinking about warranty, going through warranty stuff with an aftermarket company.